I've just received these two Black & Decker 2.4 volt cordless screwdrivers. I should imagine, oh yeah it's got CD there, so I should imagine they're 2.4 volt NICAD batteries. Um, 1992 this one's dated and amazingly it says made in England and this one it's not quite so easy to read but it says there made in England. They're both 9018 Type 1, whatever that means. Um, presumably they had a charger that fixed there and there to charge them up. Um, I'll probably convert them to lithium iron, so I'll be doing away with that as a charge point. Probably put a charge point in the end somewhere, I should think. But these will probably make quite nice pieces once they've been completely taken down to their bare components, cleaned, put back together and then um, converted to probably 4 volt lithium iron. Right, let's have a look at our Black & Decker 9018. What could be more fitting than using whatever this is? <laughs> a Black & Decker, oh a KC100 that I rebuilt a long long time ago to undo it. Let's see if that will take that screw out. I'm actually using a posi drive on a Phillips screw which is not ideal but never mind. There we go. Now then now what does that do? Does that give us any kind of access? Sort of is the answer to that, I think. Probably. Yes, it looks like that pin and that pin they probably go through all this plastic. So you've probably got to take those two pins out first. Right, I'm gonna try balancing it on my homemade vice. Pin punch because this piece is <laughs> not a good shape to do this job, but we'll see. Let's see how tight this is. Oh, not tight at all. So now that's that one. Oh, they're not tight at all. Oh, nice if it gave me the punch back. Um. Oh. 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 Job done, so that's those pins out. Doesn't look as if it matters which way round you push them to get them out. Let's get that out of the way. So there we are. So presumably we can pull this apart, and we can, what do we, oh, cogs falling out, oh look at that, is that actually a metal cog, oh wow look, actual metal cogs, oh no hold on that could be plastic, yeah it's plastic, <laughs> sorry not actual metal blogs, cogs, plastic cogs but a metal housing. So we've got a metal housing, we've got two sets of planetary gears which are um, very greasy. Oh look, look at that, let me turn that. Oh wow that works beautifully and if we turn, which position is that? So if we turn that into the lock position, what does that do then? Oh I see, so that must fall down into a shaft somewhere because that's not exactly locked completely is it, but it's locked-ish. And then we go back up to there, and now we've got full drive. Oh, oh that's, oh no, no that's not good. <laughs> that's, uh, that's suddenly gone all tight there, oh and tight there as well. And mind you, maybe it's just dried grease. So we've either got a damaged cog, Oh, we've got some goo. We'll look at that later. Right, what have we got here? 
apart from me having greasy fingers. Will this now lift off? Oh, that lifts off. So there we go, that's the top. Oh, we've got a sort of a little grease shield, which has not been too effective, judging by all the <laughs> grease that's here. Oh, nice quality Johnson motor. And then what we've got, oh, I can see I had this problem with the other one that I did, that I used to take this apart. The screw went through the battery, which was all right on this, because that's a 1.2 volt battery, that's a 1.2 volt battery. But if I put a battery in there, I can't put a screw through the middle. Well, not without causing a fire anyway. <laughs> Right, let's try lifting the rest of this out then. So it looks like I was right. These are, I think, little charge connectors, which we obviously won't be using in the future. Another one that side. There's our switch, well, at least the plastic part of the switch. There's, that looks a bit corroded, so that's that part of the switch. And this should just lift out, and it does. Just those parts, and then that's it. And this part simply allows the motor to turn like that, and that's how it makes the connections for forward and reverse. It's a very simple system, and as I said, a fair bit of goo has come through. I can take that off completely because there is no fixed connection between the motor. <laughs> the drive cog has fallen off. I'll test that in a moment, but I think that's going to work okay. It feels okay. And so this is effectively our switch. These, like I say, are for charging. And although I haven't got a charger for this, it wouldn't matter because it looks like it would have had an AC charger. I think I've worked on one on this video series before um, and I think the AC charger just uses this one diode and then feeds these two batteries. It's a very crude system but of course these old NICAD batteries they would put up with that sort of abuse. Uh, a lithium-ion battery would never put up with that sort of abuse. Right, so we need this off of there. Oh, that's that off. And then we're going to need this off of this end. And that gives us our little battery pack, which sat there. And like I say, I can't replace that with a lithium-ion battery, or rather I can, but I can't do it, and keep that screw in the middle there, which is really annoying because that's the only thing that keeps the handle together. So this one, which I did a long, long time ago, if you push hard enough on this seam, will try to separate a little bit. In the end, I had to put a little bit of hot melt glue inside and press it together. Because that's the only way, because the screw that went into it to hold it together went, I can't remember exactly where, it might have been there, which has now become the charge point. And so clearly, once there is a single battery sitting in here, that has got to go. Connected the motor up to my little lithium ion power pack. It's a simple 18651S, power comes through to here, and what I've done is I've put the switch part back on, so now when you move that, that's how you select direction. So when it's there, if I press down, I should be able to get this to touch that top contact, which is just there, and it should go in one direction. And there it goes. And if I switch it, turn it the other way, and now press it, it should be going the other way. 
Now there we have it, and then that way. And it doesn't sound too bad. I think a little bit of oil wouldn't hurt. I don't really have any proper bearings, but a little bit of oil on there and on the end here wouldn't hurt. So I'll do that next. Right, I've got a little bit of oil in this syringe, so with a bit of luck I can squeeze some out. But what tends to happen is the syringe is jam. Yeah, this one's done that. Oh, there it goes. So we've got a little bit of oil into there. You only need a tiny, tiny little amount. So that's a small amount in through to there. And then if I lift that up a fraction, I should be able to get... An You've got tiny, tiny little amount. And then what I'll do is I'll run it. It goes on like that. And then over to one direction. Not sure if that sounds any different, but still. And there you have it. So I'll leave that to soak the oil in a little bit more. You don't want too much oil in it because obviously it will get into the brushes, and although they will probably survive for a little while, they don't like being smothered with oil. So the smaller amount of oil you can use, the better. And actually that, that feels a bit better and uh, it feels quite nice, so that should be okay, so the motor seems fine. Obviously it's going to work fine with 4.2 volts, so that's not a problem. It may not seem like it, but I've just spent half an hour trying to trim back this little piece of plastic around here. And the reason for that is that this is an 18650 charge control board and it's got a USB-C connector. Now what I'm thinking is that I might be able to get this to fit there, like that. And then the USB connector will poke through, or rather it won't poke through, but there will be a hole where you can poke through with the USB connector if I can get that to fit in there tidily, which is why I've ground around a little bit of the plastic there, except I didn't grind it, I uh, used a craft knife. But now it needs to be deeper to allow this to sit deeper. So that's my next task. Hopefully you can tell that I've given the two plastic halves of this screwdriver a nice wash and some warm soapy water and the switch part it's come up almost like new and I did take the liberty of cutting a little bit deeper there and there so that this circuit board hopefully will sit and I want it to sit just inside the back so that the back will still close. And I'm hoping it will sit in there like that. Now the big problem is it needs to be fixed in place because if you imagine that's loose and then you go to plug something in it's just going to move. So that is going to need something that fixes it in place somehow there so that's going to be quite a difficult thing to arrange but that's what I need to do next. The other thing I did and I'm hoping it's in the right place is I drilled a hole through there so there is now a hole there and that hopefully is going to give access to these two LEDs because they will show when it's charging and when it's charged and they are hopefully going to sit under here and be more or less in the right place to shine up through there. What I need to do now 
is fill this in with epoxy or something similar. I'll just stick this bit of cellar tape over the hole on the inside. Right, the next problem I have is this piece. There's this piece and there's a sort of female version on the opposite piece. They're going to be in the way because the battery needs to sit there. So this needs to be cut off. I'm not sure if this is going to work because I'm not sure I've got enough room to get this in here. But I'm going to see if I can cut that plastic off. Ooh. to be doing a good job of cutting into the side. I'm not sure if this will work or not. I found this piece of thick wall tubing. It's only a tiny little piece. But what I was wondering was if the battery would fit through the middle, which I think it will, but I haven't got a battery handy to test at the moment, but I think it will, would it be possible for that to be bolted to there, battery through the middle, and then the top piece to be bolted on top. Now I can't test that at the moment because there's still a piece of plastic inside here. Hole drilled in the ring, M3 tap, and I'm just tapping that to M3. So the idea is this will be fixed to the bottom part so you'll be able to put the lid on, obviously that will be, or the handle, other part of the handle on. That will be that way up, so that will be that way up. Now a little M3 bolt that will drop in there. It will need to be cut, it seems end cutters are far more efficient than that stupid drill. I can cut off this. I've had some success with this sort of weird epoxy thing. Um, not generally with plastic, so um, this may not work out too well. But I'm going to cut a piece off of there. And basically all you do is you, you cut a lump off. And then treat it like sort of children's play stuff. Is it Play-Doh or Plasticine or something? You just you just mangle it all up and this is getting old so it's got some hard lumps in it. <laughs> but hopefully it will still work. It's not the best of stuff for your hands but um, We'll see how it goes. Right, that can carry on. Let's just get this back in here. That can go in there, that can go in there. Put that out of the way. Right, we'll keep kneading this. Right, now, now my idea is to put some of this in the bottom of there, assemble the whole thing together, and leave this to go hard. And hopefully, it will grab that ring and hold it in the right place. I have no idea if it will. 
so we will find out. Oh, let's, let's make a little bit of a sausage shape. We'll put that. It's got to be somewhere there because that's where the original hole is, or the spot where it would have been bolted in. So that ring has got to end up there somewhere. Well, don't want to get too much of this all over the thing. Now, if we push that down onto there, it's bolted in the right place. So if we squeeze those two bits together, right. This will become the positive charge lead. And this will become the negative charge lead. Negative charge lead going on. Right, I'm going to leave the positive charge lead for the moment. Because of course, this has got a face down there. This is going to go there, which means the switch needs to be underneath it. And that needs to pop into there. That drops into there, so then we know the switch part is in the right place. So we're there, we're there. This is not going to reach that at the moment, so we need some way of turning. This is going to be the wrong side, so we need that to turn a little bit more. Then we've got... I think that needs to go that way if I remember right, but we'll worry about it in a moment. So that would go there. Now we just need to get these to line up. That needs to line up with the switch, which it's not doing. And that needs to line up at the bottom with a hole. And it's not doing that either. Right, that's that. No, that's still not gone in. It seems to be the switch part that doesn't want to go in. Oh, there it goes. Yep, we're in. And that's the switch part, so that's moving, so that's okay, so we're in with that. This is going to go here, and that can go back there a little bit. We've still got to solder this on. And this is not quite going to be in the right spot, I don't think. Can we turn that a little bit more? Unfortunately, if we turn it any more, it's pushing the red wire underneath. So we really could do with the red wire coming out this side by the looks of things. I would have preferred it to come out this side though, because I've got the room for it to go down there. And then across to there. But I can't take that down underneath anymore because all of the glue is in the way. That can go there. I think that will just about clear. But I can't reach this. <laughs> so this tab is now in the wrong place. So we need that tab twisted round. Because if that stays there, which I think it has to, that stays there. So I need the tab to face across that way. So I need to unsolder and remove that tab. And then once I've done that, I've got room for this to come across there. Which is not ideal, but it can do it. And in fact... We can solder there to this side, can't we? In fact, we could do both of them to this side. That would make life simpler, because then I've just got to hold this in place. And then the wires would be here. I've decided I'm going to anchor this. I've drilled a 1mm hole there, and a 1mm hole there. And I 
I've found these two tiny little, they're almost like watch screws, and I'm going to fix that in place with those two little screws. I tried just putting it in there and closing the case and it just keeps falling apart so it's never going to work like that. I'm only screwing in the plastic so I'm not actually going to thread the plastic, I'm going to let the screws thread the plastic themselves as they go in. But once this is screwed in, that should hold that USB-C connector nice and tight and stop this board sliding around whenever you try and connect a charger point to it. Right, that's it. This is the plus point for battery charging, that's the negative point for battery charging, so I just need to connect these two wires to those two points. That looks like the negative one. And now the positive. It's very hard to get to because the wire gets in the way of itself. Right, I think we're all. Right. All we need now is this. On there. Now if I bring these over a little bit out of the way, although they're crossing each other, they shouldn't need to go anywhere near the circuit board. Circuit board in nice and tight. This, assuming it's in the right place, should just fit straight on. And there we are. Good to go. Just drop that in. In there, and pinch the bit from this screwdriver because I'm not going to use a screwdriver to do this up. I'm just going to do it finger tight. That's what it looks like at the end. You can just about make out the screws there and there. That's sitting forward nicely. I could just rub away the very edge of that circuit board because it's just a tiny corner there, but other than that it's quite neat. Right, this is the gearbox end. I don't really see any point in taking this apart. It's running beautifully and smoothly. I think all of the cogs are okay, the bearing's fine. And what I'm going to do is just add drop of oil to each cog and let that run down slowly through the whole gearbox because I think all it really needs is for the grease just to freshen up a tiny little bit and that little bit of oil in there will slowly over a period of time spread around and soften up some of the harder grease I think. You can see that it's... I could just put a tiny little bit of that grease onto these cogs if I want to, but it doesn't really make a great deal of difference I don't think, because, but it will just soften it up enough I think to spread it around a little bit better. But certainly I think that that's good enough. And we've got this part working fine, so that needs to align because that's where those pins go. But it's 
been made so that you can't get it wrong, which is fantastic. So there it won't line, so it's just a matter of fiddling with the end here till we get things to line up cogwise. There we go. And now, if we move that to that side, we go forwards, and if we move that to that side, we're going backwards. In the middle, we've got nothing, and of course this is our lock, but I don't think I'll ever be using that, so that can just stay there. So all we've got to do is put these pins back in, and they more or less fall in, because they don't really become difficult to push. So you can just push them in, and you can see that they're practically ready to fall out the other side. So they, they never become t really difficult, they just become tight enough because this, the whole thing feels slightly sprung loaded and that holds it all together. So. Right, that's a five minute Scotch bright, Scotch bright clean. A little bit cleaner there, a little bit cleaner there. I think we're good to go. Right, let's try out the charger part. Plug that in. That plugs in there. Switch on. We're charging. Hopefully you can see that red light. So we're charging. But the control on these is very, very good because you just press the trigger and then release it. I mean, it stops instantly, so what more could you want? I mean, it, it, it does everything a screwdriver needs to do. There you are. Cleaned up with scotch right. Undo. You can see the biggest problem with it is operator error. <laughs> so there we go.